All right, so in this problem, I have five to the power of x is equal to zero. So I wanna find the value of x here. So for my solution, I first start with five to the power of x is equal to zero. And now I'm gonna take the log on both sides. So now I have log five to the power of x is equal to log zero. And if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this x1 and b to the front. So this is going to equal b times log a. So log five to the power of x, we can think of a as five and b as x. So I can move x here to the front. So now I'm going to have x times log five is equal to log zero. Now, from here, I'm going to simply divide both sides by log five because we want to find the value of x, so we're going to have to isolate it. So then these two cancel out. And I am left with x is equal to log 0 over log 5. Now we're actually going to plug in the values of log 0 and log 5. So log 5, this is equal to 0 0.5. 6990 and log 0 well what is log 0 equal to log 0 is actually undefined so I have x is equal to undefined over 0 0.6990 meaning x is simply undefined and Another way to actually prove this is our equation was 5 to the power of x equals 0, right? Well, 5 to the power of 0, this is equal to 1. Let's do 1 less than 0. 5 to the power of negative 1, this is equal to 1 over 5. Let's do 1 less. 5 to the power of negative 2, this is equal to 1 over 25. 5 to the power of 3, this is equal to 1 over 125, sorry, 5 to the power of negative 3. And it's going to go lower and lower and lower because, as you see, as the exponent decreases, the number decreases as well. However, it's actually never going to approach 0. So no matter how low the exponent might be, we could even do 5 to the power of negative one trillion or something like that, and it's never actually going to be zero. All right, so in this problem, I have m to the power of 21 plus m to the power of 14 is equal to 36. So I'm gonna first rewrite m to the power of 21 as m to the power of seven times three, and m to the power of 14 as m to the power of seven times two. So if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m, to the power of n. So m to the power of seven times three, that's m to the power of seven to the power of three, and m to the power of seven times two, that's m to the power of seven to the power of two is equal to 36. Now I'm going to let m to the power of seven equal to the variable a. So now I have a to the power of 3 plus a squared is equal to 36. So now I'm going to subtract 36 on both sides. And I get a to the power of 3 plus a squared minus 36 is equal to 0. 
Now I can rewrite a squared here as negative 3a squared plus 4a squared minus 36 is equal to 0. Now I can go ahead and factor by grouping. So from a to the power of 3 minus 3a squared, and factor of a squared, so I get a squared times a minus 3, plus from 4a squared minus 36, factor out 4, so I get 4 times a squared minus 36. And a squared minus 36 Sorry, this is actually a squared minus 9. So for a squared minus 9, I get a plus 3 times a minus 3 is equal to 0. So now if I factor out a minus 3, I get a minus 3 times a squared plus 4 times a plus 3 is equal to 0. And this is the same thing as a minus 3 times a squared plus 4a plus 12 is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I have a minus 3 is equal to 0, meaning a is equal to 3. And a squared plus 4a plus 12 is equal to 0. So to solve that, we can use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times ac. Well, let's look at this part. Square root of b squared minus 4ac. So b in this case is 4. So we have the square root of 4 squared, which is 16, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 12. Well, this is the same thing as 16 minus 48. The square root of this, which is the square root of negative 36, and you can't take the square root of negative numbers, so this is wrong, and my only solution is a equals 3. So now remember how we let m to the power of 7 equal a. So now we have m to the power of 7 is equal to 3, meaning m is equal to the 7th root of 3. All right, so in this problem, I have 9 to the power of x minus 9 to the power of y is equal to 648. So for my solution, I'm going to first start by looking at x and y here. So obviously, by just from looking at it, we can state that x is going to be greater than y. Because if f, or sorry, if x was less than y, then our solution to this equation would be negative and it's positive so x is greater than y meaning that we can say that x is equal to y plus some number k so now i can replace x with y plus k so now i have 9 to the power of y plus y plus k minus 9 to the power of y is equal to 648. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 9 to the power of y plus k, that's going to equal 9 to the power of y times 9 to the power of k. I have this minus 9 to the power of y is equal to 648. Now I'm going to factor out 9 to the power of y. So I get 9 to the power of y times 9 to the power of k minus 1 is equal to 648. Now 648, that's the same thing as 81 times 8. And if you notice here, 81, this is a odd number, and 8, this is an even number. So 9 to the power of k minus, or sorry, 9 to the power of y, that's obviously going to be an odd number, right? So we can say that 9 to the power of y is equal to 81, and 9 to the power of k minus 1, that's going to be an even number, because 9 to the power of k is an odd number, and an odd number minus 1 is going to be an even number. So we can say that 9 to the power of k minus 1 is 8. So now this gives me two equations. 9 to the power of y equals 81. 9 to the power of k minus 1 equals 8. 
So for 9 to the power of y equals 81, y is simply 2. And for 9 to the power of k minus 1, I add 1 on both sides. So I get 9 to the power of k is equal to 9, meaning k is equal to 1. So now that we have the value of y and k, well remember x is equal to y plus k, meaning x is equal to 2 plus 1. So x is equal to 3. So x is equal to 3, y is equal to 2, and k is equal to 1.